Hi, he was not supposed to say that I, where I went, but obviously he spoiled the story. But um, anyway, it's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. It's, of course, very intimidating. I'm not going to dance. I'm not going to sing, and you should be grateful for that. But I will tell you a story about uh, my life. Uh, I've been asked to talk about a turning point in my life, in my career, which made me think, you know, for the first time, whether there was one single point which changed my life, or whether it was a sequence of many smaller and bigger decisions and lucky events. And even with a 2020 hindsight, I can't really tell. So I'll take you on a retrospective journey and we can kind of go step by step. I will not go back 33 years ago when I learned swimming in this exact swimming pool. Uh, I will also not talk about spending a year in Denmark when I was at Vaiselo. Uh, washing uh, semi-trailers, planting trees in Denmark to make some money. Uh, I worked hard all my life, but uh, actually the event that I want to take you back to is about 20 years ago when I, uh, when I wanted to go to the US, which was about the time when I graduated from Vaiselo. And I wanted to go to the US uh, in the summer on holidays. So back then, uh, you know, the U.S. Embassy and Consulate at Piękna uh, was crowded by Polish citizens queuing up in queues of hundreds of meters, lining up and waiting for hours to stand in front of a clerk who would decide on the spot whether a person was fit to go to the U.S. and come back to Poland or whether that person may have wanted to work illegally in the U.S., in which case a visa was denied. So I went there, hopeful, smiling, and I was rejected. <laughs> which was an unfair decision by one person, which hurt me like hell. It was unexpected. I, I really felt bad, and you can only imagine. So my reaction was anger. But af after the first moments, I, it may be, made me even hungrier to prove that he was wrong. So I, I was even more motivated by this failure than, than before. So I did not get a visa. And back then you had to wait two years to apply again. Mean, meanwhile, I went to the Warsaw School of Economics. Uh, I got in, and at the first macroeconomics class, I met a girl who later became my girlfriend. And she had a success, an uncle who was a successful businessman living in Ohio. And at some point, a few years later, that uncle invited us to the US and he sponsored my visa application. So that was a sudden payoff from this macroeconomics class and going to the Warsaw School of Economics. And during that trip, we we uh, took a bus, went to Boston, and visited Harvard Business School campus. And it was summer, so it was empty, and we sat there on a bench, dangling our feet, drinking this uh, $1 cup of hazelnut uh, coffee with cream and sugar from Dunkin' Donuts, smelling mulch, which is very typical in many places in the US, you smell mulch, and it was this feeling of academic excellence and overall achievement. And we sat there in the summer and I said, one day I would love to study here. And it felt impossible at that time. But that, that girlfriend said, one day you may. And it struck me. It was unexpected, but it was this power of positive thinking that you know, she inspired me. And it stuck in my head. We came back to Poland, I uh, finished the Warsaw School of Economics and started an international career. I worked in finance in Poland, in Switzerland, in Singapore, in Belgium, and then ended up in Boston, in the US. And I had another offer from uh, a Polish firm, which actually paid more, so I could get more money just right out of school. And not being from a rich family, it meant quite a lot to me. 
but still I chose a career where I could meet more people, learn more, discover new cultures, and see a bit of world before I came back to Poland. And everything was nice and well, and we lived in Boston, and my wife actually went to Harvard. But when, uh, after three years, three and a half years, suddenly uh, there was a corporate divestment of the part of business where I worked. And I got fired. So this fantastic career of mine and dreams of going to business school, everything looked like you know, it was about to collapse. And I, you know, again, this moment of failure and defeat, and what, what do you do with your life? And you could be an ostrich and hide your head in the sand. But I knew that it was the time when I really had to make up my mind what I want to do. Do I want to come back to Poland and just admit defeat? Or do I want to try to do something else? And I, I had a mentor. He used to be my boss um, at work. And then when he, when he stopped, you know, we, uh, we kept this good relationship. And I, I met with him for dinner. And of course, you know, when he was my boss, I couldn't tell him that I dreamed of going to Harvard because I wanted to make an impression of you know, ever wanting to work only for him. But when he was no longer my boss, I, I said, look, I, I really, really wanted to go and do an MBA. He said, so this is the perfect time. Why don't you just try and just do it? And it sounds quite easy, but obviously, you know, when you think 10,000 people apply to Harvard Business School uh, every year, only 1,000 gets admitted. The risk of failure is nine times as high as the odds of success. So it did not, you know, it, 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 was, it was intimidating. But the reality was that it was time to show the guts and to make up my mind and say, all right, I really want to do it. Even if I fail, I have to do it. So I applied, I got in. Uh, and you know, the, the, the rest, as they say, is uh, history. I had a time of my life, academically, socially, professionally, it was a fantastic time, but I would not have been able to do it if I hadn't tried. So when you sum this up, you know, was there one big moment in my life or were there a lot of small steps? You know, I, I, I realized that luck played an important part in my life and um, I'll tell you a, a, a short story to show how lucky I was and how lucky most of you or all of you are here. Um, in, my, uh, in my current job, um, and I work around the Warsaw office of a private equity fund, and I help Polish companies grow and I invest in them and I make, make them even more successful. We uh, also donate money to um, an, um, uh, a, a school in, in the slums of Mumbai. So I went to Mumbai to see how this works. And I spent two days in different classes and sat with primary school kids who uh, could study one, two, three years for free because we funded, we, we funded school. And um, I asked for parents to also come over and tell me about their experience and how they feel about this whole initiative. And we sat on the floor, there were no chairs, and there were 25 women mothers sitting in front of me. And they were so happy that their kids could have two, three years of primary education. And then I realized, and I was telling them that I also come from a relatively poor family, that my family did not give me any riches in life. But then I thought about it for a second, and I realized that what my, my parents gave me was the ability to study, and I actually studied 19 years of my life. Eight years of primary school, four years at Vyasalo, five years at university, and then two years at Harvard. 19 years. And that's, that, that was the biggest luck of my life, that I was born here and I had the chance to go and become educated. So this is, this is luck, but you also need to help your luck, right? You can hope that you will win at the lottery, but first you need to buy a ticket. So 
if I look at the steps in my, in my life, you know, it, 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 it has to start with a dream, uh, and, and that dream was clear. Uh, I, I wanted to study at, uh, at, at Harvard. But it also was not put down by uh, failure and by uh, mishaps, which obviously happen all the time, and they will happen in your life as well. Losing a job, uh, not getting a visa, whatever. You know, these things will happen. If I, I, get, I get motivated, I get uh, stronger when I, when I fail. Not only when I fail, but uh, it, it's a positive outcome of uh, not succeeding. I also get, got inspired by a lot of friends, by, by my mentor, by my uh, parents, also my friend Wukash from uh, Dvaya Salon. And obviously that conversation on the bench at the Harvard Business School campus was, uh, was an important point in, uh, in my life. So the bottom, the bottom line is, you know, you need to dare to dream and not be afraid to take risks. The only mistake you can make is when you don't take the risk, when you don't try to do what you've always wanted to do. So you have to try. And if you try and fail, it's okay. You just move on. And have someone you trust, parents, a mentor, a friend, or a girlfriend. And in my case, that girlfriend now is my wife. So when I reflect, it would be very easy to say that this turning point in my life was going to Harvard Business School and then uh, life became much easier. But maybe this turning point was actually going to the Warsaw School of Economics and taking this macroeconomics class and meeting a girl which, who later became my wife. So, to sum it up, I, I think you know, the, the biggest gratitude I have in life is towards my parents, uh, because, they, because of them I am who I am. And I was able to study and I was able to live in a very interesting country and meet a lot of people, and they inspired me and who I am emotionally uh, is because of them. But then I'm also grateful to my wife who got the best out of me, inspired me and kept pushing me all the time to reach uh, what I've achieved so far and I hope she will be doing this going forward. Thank you very much.